Hello. Um, next up, we have Greg DeVille giving a talk called Rendering to Reality. Greg began tinkering with electronics once he could crawl. He designed his own circuits and firmware for pickaxe controllers in BASIC through primary school and continued to prototype a portable media pl player for high school project. He is passionate about embedded design and micro microcontroller firmware. Please welcome Greg to the stage. Hey folks. So Chris kind of roped me into this talk. Um, uh, two weeks ago there was uh, somebody cancelled. So I'm just going to show you guys how I export out a keycad into um, Fusion 360 and Blender to make some uh, reasonably photorealistic renders of uh, circuit boards. Um, you know, useful to see what the board's going to look like before you uh, commit to buy it. And uh, it's really easy to spot mistakes sometimes in the 3D render when you've been looking at uh, the keycad, keycad environment for, for hours on end routing. So, um, yeah, so I just start here. Um, I feel like walking you through this is probably a bit, bit of a better format than um, slides. So, um, yeah, something you're all familiar with, just the PCB new. Uh, which should uh, should come up here. There we go. So this is um, this is just a circuit board I designed. Um, it's uh, I've got I've got one with me, so you can see it later uh, in person if you want. It's just a um, GPS data logger. Uh, and it's using this. Uh, uh, um, cortex part with uh, a LoRa radio, um, you know, fairly fairly straightforward design-wise. Um, so if you're in KiCad, obviously there's the built-in 3D renderer, which is the first place you know the first place to look. So um, yeah, most people you know pull this up, you get a good look at your board. Um, you know, that's nice. And uh, so we'll go ahead and, and save an image here. I'll, I'll save, I, so I'm going to have four different uh, renderings here, and we'll compare them all at the end. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead here. So part of the KiCad renderer. Um, you know, there's a ray tracer built in. So hit the button. You know, makes it look a little nicer. You get a texture on the board. Um, so that's the other option. But, um, you know, say you don't like the color of the board, you can change the colors in this as well. But, um, you know, say you want a bit of different lighting or, or something else, you know, there's not many options you can tweak. So, uh, What, what are the other options? So I'll close this out. Um, in export here, you can uh, export as a step format. Uh, that should be all good. And so this will take all the mechanical parts of your board, export them in a format that you can read in to uh, 3D software. So I'm going to be showing you Fusion 360, which is Windows and OS X based, and then also Blender, which is um, will run on run on Linux as well. So we're not leaving anybody out. So this is uh, Fusion 360, and so if we open our board here, uh, um, So this is the step file we've just generated. So we'll open that up. And what you'll find is all the parts are there. You know, that's, that's nice. But um, we've kind of lost a bit of information here. We don't have uh, tracks, tracks or vias on our board anymore. Uh, that's just a limitation, you know, when you export the circuit board, you know, to reduce you know, the, the vertices of this, uh, this board here, 
you know, they're not, we're not exporting, you know, all the tracks, basically. So I guess what can we do about this? Well, KiCad actually has um, in here, if you, if you hit plot, uh, most people would probably just use Gerber to, to plot out to actually get your board manufactured. But um, there's a few other options here. You can, you can plot to PostScript, SVG, DXF. Um, but if you, if you, if you want like a, a picture of your board, you know, a, a workflow that's worked for me is exporting as SVG and then, you know, Inkscape can convert that to a PNG that you can then, you know, attach to the board. But, you know, all this manual work, you know, you'd have to go through and select the layers. Um, so KiCad has a, a scripting functionality. It's got uh, Python bindings. So what I've done is um, on uh, following some other people's projects, I've created these uh, KiCad scripts. Um, just this plot board one here, which um, basically plots out the layers of your board as SVG files, uh, colorizes them, stacks them, and then exports, say, a PNG. So most of this is to do with handling SVGs, um, but it's basically just, just a couple lines here that just set all those settings for you. Um, and then these plot out the different layers of your board with a specified color. Um, you know, we invert the solder mask so you get a nice, nice look. And so um, I'll just run that for you now. Sorry, I'm actually, I usually run uh, Linux, but uh, I thought just to make things easier here, uh, using Fusion 360 was Windows only, and also to, uh, uh, it's a bit easier to set up dual screens and stuff on uh, Windows. So this um, Python script just takes your board as an input, so we'll just drop that in there, and um, goes through and plots out the layers, uh, and then opens up Inkscape and converts an SVG file into a, a PNG. So that's what it's doing now, which is it, the slow part. <laughs> um, so in this temp folder, we've uh, got some SVGs, but we'll wait till it's, it's done here. All right, so it's got, uh, it's got one of ours done. So uh, this is what we generate. So this is um, yeah, just an image of the front of our board um, generated from our, our KiCad board file. Um, and all of these are programmable. I mean, I've got the solder mask, uh, the solder paste shown here in gray, but you can, uh, you can turn that off and you'll just see the, um, the gold plating and if you, know, if you don't if you don't order gold-plated boards, you can you could change that color to silver to match what what you'll expect when you get your boards fabbed. Um, and you you know you can change the color. You know we've got Osh Park in the house, so you know if you get purple boards, you can render your boards as purple. Um, so with these layers now, we'll jump back in here, and uh, we can essentially apply that image onto the the front of our board. So uh, what we want to do, we want to change the texture on the front of the board here. So we'll, uh, we'll duplicate this. Um, these are specific to Fusion 360, but um, we can... Uh, so this is this now material on the front of the board that uh, is just green. So if we were to change that, you know, it's, it's just the color of the front of the board. Um, but we can change this to an image. And you see it doesn't, doesn't do anything straight away. Uh, it's stretched. For some reason, uh, Fusion 360 doesn't really know 
the scale of your image straight away. So there's some, uh, some numbers I gotta punch in here. Uh, we'll see if I can remember them. So this is just the dimension of your board, which I think is 41, uh, 79. And then it's not quite uh, centered. So you've got to got to scale this around. Uh, and that's, you know, close. So we're getting there. Uh, this is just a, a little bit, a little bit of manual work, sliding the uh, the texture over. It's not it's not quite perfect, but you can uh, you can tweak that a little bit more yourself when you're uh, doing this at home. So with that set, there you go. Um, yeah. So now now our board has a texture. Uh, no, I think I've got the scale wrong there. <laughs> Hang on. I've got, uh, I've got a little cheat sheet here. Uh, 73. All right. Okay, that's uh, it's looking a little bit better. Uh, there's a few ways to to do this, but this one um, this one works okay. There's the other way is you can actually apply this image as a as a decal if you've used that before. And this is kind of like sticking just a sticker on the front of your board, but the sticker is the uh, the, the texture. Um, so yeah, that's the that's now added in, um, and just just having the texture there, you know, makes it look more like a circuit board, uh, more like what you'd expect. So part of Fusion 360 is it's got an inbuilt inbuilt ray tracer. So we can uh, we can jump in here, and we'll angle our board a little bit, um, and hit render, and it should. Uh, should try to go ahead and and run that. All right, and now while that's doing its thing, um, oh, which shouldn't take too long, but I'll um, I'll fire a blender, and we'll run through the same thing there um, for anybody that's using uh, Linux or or just likes using Blender. <laughs> um, so initially, I didn't. I hadn't uh, hadn't planned on using Blender, but uh, I watched uh, a few tutorials, uh, some beginning tutorials over the weekend, um, a, a few weeks ago when Chris asked me to do this talk, and um, managed to at least uh, learn enough to be dangerous. So the, the thing with Blender is that what you'll see is uh, we don't have um, the step file here. Uh, if, you, if you noticed on the import, you know, Blender's more for 3D modeling and 3D rendering, um, doesn't have step file import. So, well, the good thing about KiCad is there's, um, we can jump to the old export, which is uh, the RML. So if we go ahead and do that, um, export that out, uh, what we'll notice is that now we have, uh, have our file here. So if we open this up, we'll be... Uh, <laughs> It's it's down here. It's a little bit small, so this is the the typical Blender scene here, and uh, our board is there, but um, it's a little bit on the small side. 
So we'll just uh, scale this up. So we're not worried too much about um, any mechanical constraints. So I mean, we can just scale this if we're, if we're only using this for 3D rendering. It doesn't matter if it's actually life-sized or, or this board is now three or four meters tall. Um, it doesn't matter to us. So we'll uh, rotate. Uh, like that. Um, and then we'll look at the camera. So we're a little bit... A little bit away from the board here. All right. So uh, actually, I should uh, I'll try to make the render the same. So in in Fusion, we're kind of looking at the board from this angle, so I'll try to try to match that here. Uh, this is kind of showing off uh, <laughs> how much of a, a noob I am at Blender here. Um, apparently, Blender's all about uh, keyboard shortcuts, and uh, I I don't know many of them. So here we go. That looks, uh, looks okay. So, well, I mean, we've got the same problem now that we had in Fusion 360. If we render this, um, you know, what we'll see is, you know, it's just a plain green, plain green circuit board. So we have to go in and, uh, and change the, the texture. Um, so this is now less, less about KiCad and more about uh, how Blender operates, I guess. Um, and obviously somebody that's only watched half a dozen Blender tutorials is the best person to be teaching, teaching people about Blender. <laughs> uh, uh, these split views are... Uh, just end up, uh, end up making more views. There we go. So. Nope. No, we'll just we'll, just, we'll split this way. That's all right. So, in order to get a texture in Blender, you've got to use the Node Editor. So we'll uh, we'll pull that up. So we select our circuit board here. Uh, yep, that's one. And then uh, whoop. use nodes. And. Uh, We'll see if this um, see if this works. Um, Materi. So the, uh, the trouble with the one of these exports is that these are now like meshes, and the the front of the board is a different mesh to the board that defines uh, all the through holes here. Um, and also, this computer isn't it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card, which makes uh, sometimes working with Blender a little bit cumbersome. So uh, this isn't usually the this 
This is, uh, this, this is the problem with Blender. It is a professional tool. So uh, if you're not a professional, um, sometimes it's a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult to use. So there should be, uh, I'm sure there's, you know, we'll just, uh, we'll just, we'll just start again. <laughs> we'll see if that's, uh, that's quicker. If all else fails, I've, I actually have uh, the rendering done. And I can show you, but uh, I'd like to show you how to actually how to how to do this. This is our board. Well, uh, we won't worry about the the camera moving. I'll uh, I'll fix that fix that later. Um, So if, if you were to, to run through the actual steps, I mean, you, you should just be able to apply um, the, the, the textures that we, that we generated with the script. So this, this texture. Um, and in fact, we've, I've generated one here that can be used as a bump map, which generates a bit of height texture as well. Um, and then once, once you get that in, I mean, you probably have to have to watch some of your own Blender tutorials. Um, you'll get uh, you get an image that uh, looks kind of like this. So so this is this is out of Blender. Um, and obviously Blender gives you a lot more controls about lighting and uh, color and uh, you know everything. There's there's too many dials, but uh, that's what that's what we want sometimes. Um, so this was the built-in one from KiCad, uh, and this is the built-in ray tracing in KiCad, and that's what we got from Fusion 360. And as a reference, uh, this is a photo of the completed board. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can uh, definitely, with, uh, with a bit of tweaking, you can really make your renders look look uh, closer and closer to photorealistic. So um, sorry about the technical difficulties, but uh, <laughs> feel free to, uh, to catch me during the, the next couple of days, and uh, I can show you more uh, and I'll answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, we have about five minutes for questions, if anyone has one. Uh, yeah, I, I really like the Blender flow because uh, I guess I'm familiar with it, but also automation. So mm -hmm. the scripts you are doing to generate the textures, we could just layer Blender's Python on top of it to go direct from B to 3D with set mm -hmm. camera views and everything scaled and automated. Uh, so that can be a quite nice workflow. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that, that, is, that is the plan. It's just I'm not, uh, I'm not very good at Blender. <laughs> Uh, when you did the VR, VRML export for yep. Blender, it looked like there was a little checkbox that said, uh, don't generate copper and vias. And yeah, the, the, so there's an option to generate tracks. Yeah, I'm on, wondering if that would be an alternative to using textures. Uh, yes. Um, so this, the plain PCB, no copper or silk. Um, you, can, you can export, uh, and that'll show up copper as extra uh, details in the mesh, as well as silk. So there'll be kind of extra layers, 
but you don't get any control about uh, solder mask or what colors the tracks are. Um, and so even though it gives you a nice height information because it's part of the mesh, um, you, yeah, you lose some um, creativity in how you, the renders actually look in the final form. Uh, any more questions? I seem to remember that uh, in KiCad 6, some of the um, 3D workflow is changing. Do you know anything about that or how that might affect um, what you're doing? Um, no, I haven't. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't use the KiCad daily builds or anything. I'm just stuck on the, the stable because um, I use KiCad for, for work as well. So I, I just try to stick with uh, So I'm on 5.1 now. Um, but uh, I'd assume whatever they change in 6, there'll be something similar that could, uh, could be adapted. I, uh, we could try to track down someone someone here. Well, we may know uh, what, what's going to happen with that, or someone who's working on that may be here, so I'm not sure. So, uh, Some of the devs are here, so they may be able to answer that question. Uh, anyone else? All right. Uh, let's give it up for Greg. And, uh,